Another Delete Pigeon Auctions, I'm sitting with Eddie Grugens of Belgium. Eddie, Pigeon Sport in Belgium. Yeah. Okay, this is, I would almost say this is what, you're not, is this the national sport of Belgium? No. Or is this a myth? It's not a national sport in Belgium, huh? It should be though. It should be, it was in the earlier years, huh, when you go back uh, after the after World War I, uh, two, uh, I mean, when we go back to the, the end of the 40s, the 50s, so all the working people, they, uh, they started racing pigeons. I used to live uh, when I was very, very small, when where I was born. There was a, a street, and there were houses, 30 houses. 30 houses on a street. On a street, and there were 28 pigeon lofts. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, and then we talk about the early 70s, you know? Yes. It was a time that, uh, that KBDB was uh, around uh, 200,000 fanciers rich. Yeah. Wow. Which now it's, um, no, I don't think we still have 15,000 left huh, at the moment. 50? 15. 15, 15 one, five. one five. yeah. So she's dropping big time. It's dropping big time, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. People getting old. And they die, die a lot. And, the and there is no, no youth coming uh, interested in, uh, in pigeons anymore. Because I, th I think because it's uh, quite expensive at the moment. Right. And uh, f also it's uh, very, uh, uh, it's hard to say. It's very, very, um, very tough for family life. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you growing up, for people who don't know you, um, how did it, how did it start for you in yeah. pigeon hobby? I know, hey, your street of thirty homes, your your street had yeah, thirty yeah. homes on it, and twenty eight of them have pigeons. Yeah. Basically, you know, how one, do you not get one in? One of them was my grandfather. You know. So your grandfather <laughs> originally had pigeons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He started. Um, I had a story from my father, of course. I never knew my grandfather, but he started in uh, pigeon racing um, just after World War Two. Oh. Yeah. So in the 40, early late forties. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, my father gets my, my grandfather gets sick, so my father started with the pigeons in um, early 70s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but my grandfather got sick, and then my father took over. He was a very good football player, so didn't have much time either because he was he, he's been in first class uh, division, first division uh, goalkeeper or something. So he didn't have much time, but he kept the pigeons, and I started with the pigeons then in '86 when I was uh, 15 years old. I started with the birds also. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, um, that's how I was involved in, so, uh, in the pigeon sports. You know? So your grandfather had them, your father took them over, yeah, yeah. and then you were involved. And, and when you when you were involved, when you went to school, <coughs> yeah. okay, in your grade schools and that, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the kids have pigeons? No, 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 no. no. But the father. It was an exception. Huh? It was an exception that time because then I speak about uh, yeah, the 80s, huh? 80s. Then uh, the computers came in and all these things. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So time, 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 times are changing. Yeah? So, slowly declining already at this point. Yeah, yeah. So, so at your, in the 80s, what, what, not all the kids in your school would have pigeons. No, 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 no. There was, I was, it, I was alone, uh, let me say alone. Eh? Yeah. When, when, I, when, I, when I made a talking, uh, an interview for the class, yeah. and we were talking about pigeons. You were the only one. I was the only one, of course. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They, they say, oh, yeah, my grandfather, okay, but, and then they changed that, there was a time of changing that, that area, so let's say. So pigeon sport now, it, it, it is on the decline rapidly. Yep. Um, in the same token, it's declining here in, in Belgium. You hear it declining all over the world. But not all over the world. Yes, this is my next point. You have been to a lot of different countries. Yeah. Uh, where are some countries that it's booming? Where it's just it's breeding um, like amazing. Romania. Romania. Why in oh, Romania? Poland. Why are these two countries? I have no idea. You have no clue? I have no I, I have a little bit of clue because these people were always under the communistic regime, I think. I think that might be one of the reasons. Not much money that time. Uh, so they, they raised pigeons, they had pigeons all over, all over the time. Right. But now these people are getting some money, they're getting involved, they, they, the, grand, the borders are open. So they also come to Belgium, they, they, have to, they, know, they get, get the knowledge how to do. And they buy the pigeons. They, they buy the pigeons. And I also think a lot of people are starting or doing the pigeons because of the money. Yeah, and that's true. It's, it's maybe hard to say. I, I, I think it's hard to say, but more and more you see that people are keeping pigeons of profit. For, 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 to try to get some profit. Right. But 
and, and you've you've been like I say, Poland, Romania. Yeah. You've mm -hmm. been to China. You've been to Taiwan. How is it over there? Is it only business or is it both? No, China. China. Let me say, China is is. Um, it's China is totally different. You know, I've been to lofts, <laughs> small apartments. Mm -hmm. Three children, two children, three three children. They have three rooms. One room was a pigeon loft. So the children had to sleep in one room, parents had one room to sleep, and one room was a pigeon loft, you know? Wow. In the apartment. In the apartment. Yeah. Yeah. These people these people they they, they like they like just like the pigeons. They had they had a Sputnik outside the window. Right. The Sputnik trap, yes. The Sputnik trap outside the window. Uh, very very nice to see, you know. And and yeah, these these are hob these these are hobbyists. But the Chinese are, are gamblers, you know? Yes. So they like they put the pigeons in the loft races, they like to gamble. Right. Yeah. So that's another point. They they keep most of them keep keep pigeons, I think, for gambling. For gambling, and and you've been all over the world. What are your what are your views or your thoughts on one loft racing? Because I know here in Belgium, mm -hmm. it, do, it it doesn't exist. I mean, we couldn't say today, hey Eddie, take me over to a one loft race here in Belgium. It it's not here. First of all, because it's not allowed by the KBDB. Okay. Yeah. So you have to get, get a private, a special license from KBDB to to do the the one loft race for Zilla Laga hats together with uh, with the DAF mm -hmm. and the Herbots. They had, but since since they stopped, no one tried it. Tried it also. Okay. Because also it's I think it's uh, very hard to find a spot in Belgium um, because when you have that kind that lot of pigeons to train, you need to you have to train them. So I think it's also very hard to find a spot to have that kind of lot of pigeons to train, not uh, going. In, into autumn people's area, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so when I have here, for existence, 500 meters away, a loft with uh, 2,000 pigeons, and I, I can let my youngsters out, yeah. So uh, you think this that could be a problem? That could be, that is a problem, 100%. But why it's, it's not in Belgium, I have no idea. You don't know. I have no idea. Also in Holland, eh? just the same. Eh? Yeah. Also not allowed. Eh? Now, what's your views though? Do you like the one off off races? What do you I think of I don't like them? much, no, no. You don't like much? No, no. What's your reasoning on why? Because uh, you give everything out of control and I like that. <laughs> you like to have control. I like to have control. <laughs> <laughs> okay, quite simple. And I guess, I guess partly is, uh, yes, you lose the control, but is it because you don't see the work put in? It's more of a money? For that, for sure. Yes. That for sure. That for sure. When you when you, when you make at the end, the end of the line, the bottom line, you mm -hmm. make the account. Yes. You see the the inscriptions. The kind of money they get in. Yes. And the kind of money they pay out. Mm -hmm. And you see that difference, then you know. And the work ethic. How far, how far we are. With, with the losses of the pigeons and yeah, everything. Yeah. But the lost, the lost pigeons are also paid, huh? Yeah. So I have, I have my idea about it, but okay, yeah. Uh, every day, everyone is hobby, huh? you know? yeah. And everyone is on thoughts, is his own thoughts. But but I have, yeah, I have no interest in. in comp I will give two, three pigeons to the garden race or something. Yes, that's no problem. But but not give like some like, like some people do give uh, sp breed 100 youngsters and spread them out for the one loft races. So. And and you know, it, it is kind of funny because getting back to your pigeons, I know people where I'm from, they have your pigeons. Mm -hmm. And you know, I originally first came across your name. It wasn't your name. It was what your pigeons had done for other people. Yeah. This name, Eddie Grugens. Mm -hmm. Eddie Grugens. Eddie Grugens. Okay. You start to think. Now, we just talked to you. You give a couple pigeons there mm -hmm. to one race and you play a little bit. Yeah. You, you play like this. But your pigeons in one loft <laughs> racing, which is a mar remarkable, yeah. do extremely well. Uh, well, I know, yeah. And, and why do you think it is? Why I think it is, I have no idea. I, I, um, no. I think they have a will to come home. That's that. That's that's one point. That's it. Uh, yeah, and they <laughs> and they also fast droppers. So when they come home, they drop fast also. Uh, well, well <laughs> most uh, of the time, <laughs> you know. A, a question for you. And you've you've been to these these big 
national lofts, these world record lofts, yeah, let's yeah. say, okay? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you've been all over the world, uh, all over. What is your thoughts about breeding pigeons from these one loft birds? A, you know, a pigeon that wins first prize at the 300 I'm, miles. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure and I'm convinced about it. When you have to go to the, when you want to go to the one loft races, you need to buy one loft race winners. Okay. I'm pretty convinced about that. Because I think it's a different type of pigeon who win the one loft race and you race on your own loft. Now, question for you. Yeah. Do you think pigeons from your own loft, uh, this is what I'm going to say. Eddie, you're going to race pigeons this year. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give you all the money in the world. You're going to race here out of your own backyard. Mm -hmm. You're going to go and pick out all the one loft race winners. Mm -hmm. Breed them and fly them out of your own house. Do you think you're going to get success? Or do you think going with your own family or from top guys around flying the same middle distance races, mm -hmm. you'll get a better pigeon? It's a good question. Because uh, I believe that one loft pigeons, yes, we'll breed one loft pigeons, but I believe still, uh, we see it. Your yeah, family, yeah, yeah, yeah. your family can do Yeah, of course, that's correct, that's both. correct, that's correct. That's I correct. don't know if these one loft birds can come into a loft and win week in and week out. I'm, I'm not convinced about it either, so. I wouldn't bet a breeding program yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you agree, one loft for one loft is good. Yeah, you see, you see like, like Mike Gaines is doing. Yes. It's, it's, it's incredible, you know? But but what's my my gain is has his family, he has his, his Wolverine family, that's super fantastic, yeah. and he, Wolverine breeds one loft races. But you never see pigeons from my gain is in national winners or in ace pigeons in Belgium or Holland. No, you only see them in the winners and the one loft races, okay. and that's what he's doing best. Yes. So. I think it's a different type of pigeons. You right. also see in Germany a lot of I've seen in Germany also some birds, well, love birds. Yeah, they don't they don't raise themselves in the, in the home only the one love race, but they also buy one off pigeons. One off pigeons. And again, getting back to what we just said, we're not here to rip on anybody. No, we're no, not no. saying no. No, no. We're just looking at different qualities, different setups, different styles yeah. of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. like, for instance, if you want to win sprint racing, we don't go and buy Barcelona pigeons. No, definitely not. No, it's backwards. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so that's that, that's interesting. You know, the sport is changing, and 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 keeps evolving. You are here. You work with EPW. You get around. Um, you see firsthand from all these countries. <clears throat> In the next twenty years, mm -hmm. where will pigeon sport be? I think um, like we're moving this, like, like we are moving now, I think we go to 100% professionalism. 100%. Yeah, I think uh, what you see in 20 years, huh? 20 years, yes. And I think um, all professionals will compete against each other. So pros yeah. against pros. Pros against pros, yeah. There will be no no man with a hat will be not there uh, involved anymore. I'm, no. qu I'm quite sure. Really? I'm quite sure because the sport is going too fast at the moment. Too fast. Too fast, yeah. And what, how, what do you mean by too fast? Uh, the sport is going too fast. What I mean, there are more and more big, big lofts mm -hmm. who are overruling everything. You know? So, so the, the, the more like Lo lofts with one thousand birds and then ah. three, three, four hundred youngsters who are competing. When you get guys like this in the club, then yeah, the small ones say. No. They stop. In, in your... There are, there are exceptions, eh? There yes. are exceptions. There's exceptions. Always, you know? <laughs> no, no, this is what I'm saying. Are you saying that the small, the small... Can there be a small professional? Or is it only a big professional? Uh, and I'm meaning a, a small loss, uh, you know, 12, 12 or 15 pairs, uh, you know, 30, 30 cocks, 30 hens, 60 young ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, 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 are, there are definite uh, examples, huh? Yes. There are examples, huh? Who, do, who, who are doing it, huh? You, right, right now, uh, for the best from Belgium, so with small lofts, huh? Right, but you think slowly it's I going to... Slowly, you speak in 20 years, huh? Yes. So I think also the, the, the small, also the club, on the club levels, it will be changing a lot, I think. Right. You see now what's happening also, there's a club stop, there's a club stop. So I think we will also have some big clubs over over the years. Amalgamate together. Yeah. Uh, from going to your clubs, and you've been going to the, you've been going to 
Pigeon Club, what, since the 70s or 80s? 80s. 80s, yeah. You are 70s with my father, but okay, yeah. yeah. Have you noticed the difference in the clubs, the, 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 how the people treat each other? Yeah, yeah, a lot. A lot different? A lot. Yeah. So yeah. in the 80s, how did they treat each other at the club? They were drinking beer. They were drinking beer, okay. <laughs> and having fun? Uh, drink beer, uh, drinking beer, having fun. Okay. And uh, when you win the first, it's okay. When you have no, when you win no prize, it's also, also okay. Okay. But that, but that thing changed a lot, huh? There's a lot of jealousy, there's, uh, yeah. So now you go to the club, there's still beer? Uh, no, because it's not allowed anymore. No more. When you drink and you get caught by the police and... <laughs> so, so, so there's, there's, no, there's no drinking no, beer. But, it, but it's also a lot of changing, Ryan. You know what? People getting older, you know? Uh -huh. When you go back to the 70s, 80s, you have these people who were that time 30 years old, between 20, 30 years old, they're racing pigeons. Working hard, playing work, hard. Working hard, playing hard, drink beer. Have you fun. Know, have fun. They're now 70 years old, you know? Uh -huh. So they, it, it automatically dials back. Dials back, yeah. yeah. And and, and the youth, the youth is different, huh? Yeah, when you, the youth don't when, drink beer. <laughs> we were playing around in the garden, we were playing in the fields. Yeah. yeah. We were searching for butterflies and for... for Mud under your fingernails, yeah. and now the kids, and it's now, all computers. Yeah, that's correct. So the time is also changing. And, and, and uh, I always say, the good times are not coming back, so... Wow, isn't that, that's kind of a sad moment, isn't it? That's a sad moment, yeah, but, but it is what it is, huh? Yeah. Also in the bars, huh? When you go to a village, it's not the same. We had we had 15 pups in the village. Now we still have two. Huh? Two left. Two left. Yeah, you know. So the good time slowly shrinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same with the pigeon sport. Eddie, you know, this this loft tour was excellent. The quality is great with your pigeons. You're always open uh, for discussion. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, he's a great guy to send him a message. He's on Facebook. Uh, you have pigeon questions. He has tons of knowledge. He's very good with the pigeons, very good pigeon fingers. And you've, you've sort of... You've seen a whole life of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, really, you, you were in the boom of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now you're, like we say, yeah, you're coming down towards the end of it. Coming down, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could really, by the end of this, write a book, and and, and maybe you will one day. No, no, no. He's I'm, not a book I'm not, writer. Not such a good writer. No, I can, I can, I can speak better than uh, than writing. So. <laughs> well, well, Eddie, I, I wanted to say thank you again for sitting yeah. down. Just a small little interview. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Uh, all the best in the up and coming future future with everything you guys do it's great uh, and thanks for supporting us here at feathers elite thank you for it's your time. number one my friend thank, thank you. you for your time i hope you guys